You can spend months learning all of the technical features available in Notion databases, but if you just learn these three basic principles of database design, you will be able to create databases like a pro today. I've adapted these rules to the Notion ecosystem, but they are universal to database design. In fact, I created a sister version of this video about creating databases with Airtable. All right, so I made us a little page here for how to design a Notion database. And right at the top, I have highlighted the most important thing, which is databases save you time by never making you repeat yourself. And then under that, I have our three rules that we're gonna go through today. And then under that, I have a little heading for the databases that we are going to create. So this one right here is a database that I already created. And for this example, we're gonna pretend that we review movies and shows. So this is a database that has all of the different content that I am going to review and post it on YouTube or on social media. And then the date that I'm gonna post it, what the status is. So did I already review it or is it in progress? And then the content type. So sometimes I'll do a conventional review. Sometimes I'll make you know a top three, top four list. And sometimes I'll just do fun facts. And then of course I've got my outline of what I'm actually going to put in the content. And so going back to our main page for a second, I want to look at our first rule, which is don't repeat property types. So in our movie reviews database, I just went through these different columns here that have different pieces of information. And in Notion, these are called properties. And I like the properties that I've chosen. I think this is a nice, good looking database. It's there's not too much information on there, but it has what I need. Um, but this is kind of a lot of dates and you can see this goes all the way up to 2025 and I'm going to add more and more content to this. So I want a way to kind of divvy it up. So I'm not just looking at this huge long list of stuff that I have to do. And so what is the best way to do that? Well, I could create another database, right? I could just copy this one, create a whole new database, and then I could have one for each month of the year. But if I were to do that, that would go against my first rule, which is not to repeat property types. And the reason I don't wanna do that is because if I end up with all of these different databases that have the same information, first of all, I have to duplicate the database every time I need a new one. But then what if I want to look at the whole list and you know call up all of my top four lists or search for a specific piece of content that I did a few months ago, it's gonna be very hard to find that. And so rather than breaking it up that way, we can use a super powerful feature in Notion called Views. So up at the top of our database here, we can see this little plus button. And if I hit the plus, then I get this little dialog on the side, which allows me to create a new view. And so for this view, let's say I just want to see the content that I'm going to produce in October. So I'm going to call this view October. And I want it to be a table view. A table view is just a spreadsheet like this. And then I can go up and hit this filter button and I want to filter by date. So I want to say the date is within October 1st to 31st. And now I can see in my view, I just see the dates from October, but we haven't duplicated anything. And the rest of the data is still there. If I go back to show all, I can see all of it, but then I've got this nice little October tab and I can keep on creating. I could create uh, November, December, January, etc. Likewise, if I want to filter by the content type, I could also create views for that. So let's say I want to have a view just for fun facts. I'll click another plus here. Call this fun facts. And then we'll filter it where the content type is fun facts. And the other thing that we can do in addition to making views is something called linked databases. And a linked database is really the same concept as a view, except that you can put it anywhere else in your Notion ecosystem. You don't have to have it you know, attached to this database. So if I zoom back out to my main page here, I'm gonna create a linked database. So I'll just hit the slash button and then start typing table because I wanna create a table view of the movie reviews database. So I click table view here, and then it's gonna give me the option to choose the database, an existing database that I wanna make a view of, or to create a new one. So I'm gonna hit movie reviews here. This is the one that I want. And uh, now I can also copy an existing view, or I can pick show all, and then I can filter it the way I want to. So for example, let's filter this one to show anything that we're gonna make in the next month. So I'll pick the date 
filter. And we'll say date is on or before one month from now. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a page. And then we can name it movie, movie reviews within the next month. One other thing to mention just real quick is that when we're in, so if I open this up, the movie reviews in the next month, you can see this little arrow here to movie reviews. And so this is our link that will take us to the original database because this is a view, right? That's outside of it. And we could have anywhere in any page in our notion ecosystem, but we can click this little button and get back to our original database. So that brings us to our second rule here, which is to eliminate redundant work with relations and rollups. So going back into movie reviews, I can see that I have these content types here and then I've got an outline. And every time that, you know, I create a new piece of content, I need to write a new outline for it. But all of my outlines are pretty similar. They start very similar. And so rather than having to kind of write that out every single time, I would like Notion to just automatically pull in a template for the content type that I've chosen for that review. And to do that, we're going to use a super powerful feature called relations. So the outline templates for each content type is really a different type of information. It doesn't really fit into this table because this table is about different pieces of content that we're going to create. And then the templates are something that is a subset of content types, right? So the first thing we need to do to harness the power of a relation is to create a new database that's just about content types. So I'm going to go back into our main page here and then create a new database in, a, in its own page. And we'll call this content types. And then let's give it the three content types that we've already used in the other one. So we've got the top four list, a normal review, and fun facts. And let's delete this uh, example property here. And then now let's go back to our main movie reviews database. And now I'm going to create a new content type relation property. So content type relation. So we're going to call it. And then for the type, we're going to call this a relation. When we pick a relation, we pick a database that we want to relate to. So that's going to be content types here. And now that that's created, if I go in here, then I can actually pick from the different options, right? Because I'm linked. What I've done is I've linked to that database. And so now I can pick. And so if I want to do fun facts for this one, then I will just link it to fun facts. And for the next one, top four list, review, etc. And once I've established that link, I can use another feature to actually pull in details from the other database that correspond to these different categories. So these outlines, rather than just keeping them in here, I'm going to copy these and paste them in the content types database in a, a new property called outline templates with a text property type. And I think we had a different order here it was fun facts, top four review. So then I should be able to paste these in. Great. And so now that I have these in here going back, to the movie reviews database, I can then pull that into this document. So I'm going to create a new property called templates. This is going to be a roll up field type. And so for the relation, we want to pick the content type relation because this is where we're going to pull from. And then for the property, we'll choose the templates. And you can see that immediately they showed up right here. And so now when I you know, pick a new, when I make a new thing, so I'm going to do a review of friends, it's going to be fun facts. I can pick fun facts from here and then it'll automatically pull in that template here. And what's really cool about this is that I can actually edit the templates and have that update in real time. So if I go back to my content types database, then whoever does a top four list, it's always top three. So I'm going to change this to top three. And I'm going to change the template to say top three. And then when I go back into my movie reviews database, that has updated. Now it's a top three list, top three reasons why. And so when I'm going to create a new piece of content, like for friends, 
then I can open up fun facts here and take my template, copy that, and then start customizing it here. So while we're talking about relations, I want to show you one more super powerful feature. If we go into the content type relation property uh, and click edit property, we can see that right now movie reviews goes has a one way connection to content types. But if I toggle this button here that says show in content types, then it's a two way connection. So I toggle that, then I hit update relation. And now if I get out of this, I can get back to the content types database by clicking on one of these cells here that's connected and then clicking content types. So now we are in our content types database again, and you can see all of the different movie reviews that are related to the content types. And because they're related, we can also do some math. So for example, if I wanted to just keep a running count of how many fun facts, pieces of content I've created, how many top three lists I've created, I can create a roll up to sum that information. So I'll hit the plus here to make a new property. Then we'll choose roll up. And this roll up is going to be called number created. The relation we want to pick is to movie reviews. And then the property is going to be, doesn't really matter what the property is because we're just going to count all of the records that are related. So we we'll keep it as name. And then to calculate, we want to count all the values. And you can see right here, now we have a nice count of 211 based on how many things are linked. All right, let's keep rolling here. Want to go to rule number three, which is make good use of the database title. And really what I should say is title property. So let's go back into the movie reviews database. And we can see here that this first column, if we open it up, is the title property type. And if I go into the next one and I try to change this to a title property type, you'll see that it doesn't exist. The only thing that can be the title is this first column. And that fact is a super important point in how this database works. So in a Notion database, each row here is actually its own page. And I can even open the page. So for example, for Family Guy, I can hit open here and it opens this whole page to the side. I can even expand it and it looks just like any other Notion page because that's what it is. But it's also a row in the database with properties that are still listed at the top. And obviously, as a Notion page, it has a title here. And the title is important because the title tells you what you're looking at. Going back into the database here, I'm actually going to hide this content type select field. Or actually, let's just delete it because we don't need it anymore. We have our content type relation, which is fulfilling that function now. And you can see here that for the content types, the titles are what shows up in that relation. And if I open this up and go to content types, you're going to see these titles as the relations here, right? Friends, Grey's Anatomy, etc. And that is really important to keep in mind when you're naming titles because these titles have to be descriptive and they also should be unique. Meaning that if you have, for example, if you're going to do multiple reviews on Family Guy, because Family Guy is a TV series with hundreds of episodes, if you're going to do multiple Family Guy reviews, then you should probably have something more descriptive than what I have here, which just says Family Guy. Otherwise, in your relations here, if we go over to content types, it's just going to say Family Guy, Family Guy, Family Guy, Family Guy. So that last rule is a simple one, but it's super important. And it's just to be very descriptive with these titles here. And if you're going to have multiple ones that you think have the same title, then you probably want to change your naming convention so that, you know, instead of this, just saying Family Guy, it says Family Guy episode one, or maybe it says Family Guy, November 7th, 2022, because adding date is another good way to differentiate it. So congratulations, you understand the most important principles of database design. To see these same principles in action with some other more advanced spaces, check out these full build tutorials. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.